Welcome to News Channel 8. I'm Jerome Gian, and here's what's happening in our top story. Fredericksted community is still feeling the aftershocks from yesterday morning's police raid on a political activist home. News Channel 8's Wes Small has the details. We now have more information on that breaking story from yesterday morning when a literal dream team of agents uh, conversed in Fredericksted on Queen Street, uh, that to the home of senatorial candidate Kendall Siegel Peterson. You might remember it was early yesterday morning when members of the Blue Lightning Task Force, DEA, the Marine Response Unit, FBI, local police, and just about every law enforcement agency that you could think of moved on that home. Um, then, according to Gene Hawk, who is the DEA spokesperson for our territory, he said that this investigation is ongoing. Several items were taken out of the home for evidence. They originally obtained a federal warrant the day before in federal court so that they could move on controlled substances inside the house. According to Mr. Hawk, confiscated was certain amounts of controlled substance, which at this time is being tested at the DEA lab. Also, some evidence that showed other crimes have been involved. Uh, by that, uh, we have no idea what they mean, what they're alluding to, uh, they wouldn't tell us any of that. Right now, they're consulting prosecutors as well. Uh, the agencies are consulting prosecutors about what charges are going to come next. Also, arrests, according to Gene Hawk, are sure to come. Arrests will be made in this case. Meanwhile, according to election system deputy supervisor Corrine Plaskett, she said that she had no knowledge of the raid yesterday, but even if criminal charges would be filed against Mr. Peterson, he would still maintain his right as an elected official to continue the work and the constitutional convention that he is involved with and also to continue his run for the Senate unless he is convicted. Because I'm based on VI law, no person convicted of a felony offense can seek or continue service in the public office. And there you have it. Now you're updated on the case in Frederickstead involving that early morning raid on Queen Street. Again, the only person talking from the law official standpoint is Gene Hawk, the DEA spokesperson. I'm Wes Small for News Channel 8. In other news, the Democratic National Convention in Denver is just about winding down. News Channel 8's Wes Small files this report. It's all about Barack Obama. And oh, what a night it was last night at the Democratic National Convention in Denver, Colorado, as Hillary Clinton, his former rival, for what could be considered a mudslinging Democratic campaign for the nomination of president, laid it on the table, laid down the law for her constituents and her supporters to give their undying support to Barack Obama. What an event it was. And at that event, right on the uh, floor in Denver, is our own VI delegate to Congress, Dr. Donna Christensen. Let's go to Dr. Christensen right now and find out what's the latest with the Democratic Convention. And now we do have current VI delegate to Congress, Donna Christensen, on the line with us. And uh, boy, Donna, this is just a fantastic event, how Hillary set it off last night uh, with the undying support from her Democratic Party. How's our VI delegation doing out there? Oh, we're doing really well. We had a great meeting this morning. As a matter of fact, it went over, this, which is why I had to wait until now to get to you. We had uh, Cheryl Stapleton, who is a state senator here in New Mexico, who's from St. Croix, come in and meet with us this morning, as well as one of my colleagues from Illinois, Congressman Danny Davis. And so we had a very spirited meeting, plus we had a, a presentation from our tourism department, and a lot of discussion was generated by our two visitors and that tourism presentation. So it was a very lively and long meeting this morning. The import, one of the um, key things about Congressman Davis visiting us is that he chairs the committee that oversees the U.S. postal system. And so uh, he got an earful 
from the Virgin Islands, but he didn't need it really because he's been the person who's been instrumental in working with me to get the Inspector General uh, looking into our issues. So it was a very good meeting. We're doing really well. I'm sure everybody's seen Robert Rios all over the TV, so we're getting a lot of play. I know Robert. I know how. That's, he's a showman. Uh, listen, now, now, Doc, um, about tonight's speech and how 45 years ago at the Reflecting Pool, uh, the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Um, made his famous I Have a Dream speech. And then tonight, uh, Barack Obama accepting uh, the nomination for the Democratic Party uh, president-elect. Uh, what a special night uh, for the world. It, it certainly is, and we're really looking forward to it. As difficult as the logistics might be for going into that stadium with maybe about 80,000 people, uh, I'm going to be there just for this historic moment. I was not there uh, back 45 years ago for the I Have a Dream speech. I, I did some of the anniversaries on the mall thereafter, but um, I'm certainly... God willing, going to be there tonight, and um, it's a real historic moment. And then the work begins. That's right. Got to get over the euphoria and roll up our sleeves and get to work because we have to have this Democratic president come January. But let me just go back also to to last night where we had President Clinton speak, and he was uh, vintage Clinton, the statesman, the political icon, uh, laying out the sort of roadmap and passing the torch to Senator Obama. And that was great. And of course, Senator Biden then accepting the nomination for vice president and then um, giving another great speech. So we, we've been having a very exciting time and the momentum is building and we, we intend to take that momentum all the way to November 4th. Well, congratulations to you, all our VI uh, people out there uh, showcasing uh, our beauty here. We really appreciate that. We know that you miss us and, and miss our home and just continue to continue to do the good work that you're doing, Doc, and, and that's appreciated. One more thing now as we wrap it up uh, tonight as he, as he takes the stage and everything. Uh, will you be able to give us one more update uh, tomorrow? I should be able to, but and, uh, and that brings me to the other thing that I wanted to say, that tomorrow I'll be traveling with members of Congress to the funeral services for my friend and colleague, Steph Congresswoman Stephanie Tubbs jones in Cleveland. Yes, yes. So um, I will try probably um, to uh, around 9 o'clock in the morning to get in touch with you. But Thank you. As you can imagine, that's going to be a, a, a very yes. busy time tomorrow yes. morning as we... we get ready to travel and then nope. with our vi delegate to congress donna christensen at the democratic convention in denver colorado we certainly thank her for giving news channel 8 these updates we'll hear from her one more time tomorrow before she heads on the plane back to washington dc i'm wes small for news channel 8